Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how you can connect to a VM in GCP without using its public IP address. There are many reasons why you don't want an external IP address on a VM in GCP, and basically the security is the most important reasons of this. Once you remove the public IP address of a VM, then basically you won't be able to access it from outside without a VPN connection, whether this is a cloud VPN or an interconnect connection. But then if you don't have these or if you cannot set up these, of course you won't be able to connect to the VM. However, you can still easily connect this VM using IAP or Identity Aware Proxy. In this video, I'm going to show you quickly the steps that are required to do this, in specific how you can set up an RDP connection to a Windows VM using Identity Aware Proxy. So stay tuned and watch to the end. And just before I start this also, I have another video in more details about Identity Aware Proxy, how it works and what are the prerequisites and how you can enable it and all of this. So if you want to know the details and all of the backstory and how actually IAP work, then check that video out. In this video, I'm going to briefly show you the actual steps that are required to enable and connect to a Windows VM. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video so that more people who are interested in this can find this video quickly. And also, it will help me grow the channel as well. So here is my cloud console and as you can see there is, let me go to compute engine and as you can see there is or there will be a compute engine VM without a public IP address and as you also notice I cannot click the RDP button and I cannot just connect to this VM using the RDP. So in order for me to access this VM First of all, I will need to confirm that IAP is enabled and I am allowed to access the VM by going to the IAP, which is found in the I am an admin menu. And once you go there, you will find the identity aware proxy item. Once you go there, you will find the status of the API. If it was not enabled, then it will ask you to enable it. Otherwise, it will show you this interface where it allows you to change and check the status for the various endpoints. Now this is enough for me to confirm that IAP is enabled, but then I have to go to the VM itself and check if I have permissions to access that VM or not. So this is the VM that I have created. And if I go to the information panel, I will see that I am allowed indeed to access this VM because I am the owner. Otherwise I need to grant myself the uh, uh, authorized IAP tunnel user, which is this one, secure tunnel user. Once you grant this, then you will be able to access the VM. One more thing I need to confirm is the firewall so that the required IP ranges for IAP are allowed to be connecting to the VM. So this is done from the VPC network and then go to firewall. And then you will just confirm that there is the IAP rule there or not. This is the IAP rule in my case, and it's allowing all the traffic to go and reach to the, the whole VPC actually. So once I confirm these two options, then I can now connect to the VM. There are two ways. So the first one I will show you is the command line, which is using the gcloud SDK. And for this, let me bring up my command prompt. And the command that we need to type is gcloud compute and then start IAP tunnel. And then you need to type the instance name. In this case, it is instance one. And then the port or the target port that you want to uh, initiate the tunnel on, which is in my case, 3389. And that's all what's required basically. I think also I need to specify the zone because it's a non-default zone. So I think zone equals us dash central one dash eight. So with this, it's going to establish the tunnel. Do it for the private. So it's, it's, it's listening on the port now. And this is the port that it's listening on. So I can just copy this and then I can connect with remote desktop. I will do localhost, then the port and that's it it will ask me to sign in with my username and password. So this is my username. 
and the password is here and as you can see now I am inside or it's getting me inside the VM this is one way of doing this and in my opinion I think it's the fastest because you already have gcloud uh, installed or you should have gcloud installed and authorized for you on your system then you just invoke this command and then connect with the uh, local RDP client of your Windows. The other way that you can use is by going to GitHub and finding IAP Desktop, which is a client that is made by Google to make using IAP to connect to VMs much easier and a more friendly process for all of us. So you download it and install it and then sign in, authorize it, you'll get this interface and it will show you the instances that you have access to in the projects that you can add so all what you have to do here is just right click an instance click connect and then just select the preference for the credentials it will ask you to type your username and password and connect so this is my username i'm just pasting the password here i'll click ok and then it will take me inside the vm through iap if you want to see more on IAP desktop, check out the other video that I have previously uploaded about this. It does cover IAP desktop as well and how you can sign in and add the project and all of this. And basically that's all. I hope you now know how to access Windows VMs in GCP without having a public IP on these VMs. And also I hope you'll start implementing this to make sure you are enhancing your GCP environment security and also increasing the protection for these VMs. If you have any question or comment about this video or any of the contents, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments section and I will be more than happy to discuss and interact with you about anything. Also, for more GCP related content and ideas, make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable that bell notifications button so that you can get notified of any new content and any new uploads that I have. And also if you are an existing Google Workspace admin or considering to be one and you are looking for a training and help in managing your Google Workspace account, then I would highly recommend you check out my course on Udemy, Google Workspace Admin, the complete course. It does cover a lot of topics such as users and groups management, device management, and also talks about Google Vault and security and compliance concepts as well. You can get it from the link in the video description with a very good discount actually. Also feedback about this is welcome. Anything you would like to ask or discuss, I will be more than happy to discuss it with you anytime. Thanks once more for watching. Stay safe wherever you are and I will see you again in a new video.